A hash table is a data structure that allows for the very fast retrieval of data, no matter how much data there is. For that reason, hash tables are widely used in database indexing, caching, program compilation, error checking, and much more. Consider a simple one-dimensional array variable. To find an item in the list, you can employ a brute force approach, such as a linear search. This would involve checking each item in turn. For a very big array, this could take a very long time. Now suppose you want to retrieve a value from an element in the array and you happen to know the index number of that element. You can look up the value very quickly indeed. In fact, the time it takes to look up any particular value in an array, if you know the index number, is independent of the size of the array and independent of its position in the array. But how can you know which element of the array contains the value you're looking for? The answer is that each index number can be calculated using the value itself, so that the index number is in some way related to the data. Let's repopulate the array, starting with Mia. We'll take each letter of the word and get its ASCII code. We'll add the ASCII codes together. And now we're going to divide this by the number of elements in the array. In this case, there are 11. And we'll take the remainder of that calculation, which is 4. That's where we're going to place Mia. Let's do it again, this time with Tim. We sum up the ASCII codes and divide by the number of elements of the array, 11. The remainder is 1, and that's where we'll place Tim. Same again for B. This time, the calculation gives us 0. So we can insert B into the array at position 0. Same again for Zoe. Zoe goes in at 5. Jan goes in at 6, Ada at 9, Leo at 2, Sam at 3, Lou at 7, Max in 8, and Ted in position 10. Once again, the array is fully populated, but this time each item has been placed in the array according to a calculation based on its value, namely the sum of the ASCII codes modulo the size of the array, in this case 11. So let's retrieve an item, let's say Ada. We perform the same calculation again, and we use the calculated index number to perform a fast array lookup. Rather than just storing individual items of data, hash tables are often used to store key value pairs. For example, Ada's name would be the key, which would be used to calculate the index, and her date of birth, the corresponding value. For this reason, a hash table of key value pairs is sometimes referred to as a hash map. In fact, if an object oriented approach was taken, each person would be an instance of a class, and the key would be just one of many different properties. By populating the array with objects, you can effectively store as much related data as you like for each key. A hashing algorithm also known as a hash function, is the calculation applied to a key, which may be a very large number or a very long string, to transform it into a relatively small index number that corresponds to a position in the hash table. This index number is effectively a memory address. For numeric keys, it's common to take the key and divide it by the number of available addresses and take the remainder. We say that the address is the key modulo n, where n is the number of available addresses. As you've seen, for alphanumeric keys, we can divide the sum of the ASCII codes in a key by the number of available addresses and take the remainder. Another method that can be employed is known as the folding method. For example, a telephone number can be broken up into groups of two digits. These can then be added together and then, depending on the size of the table, we'll divide this by some constant and take the remainder. There are lots of different hash algorithms to choose from, some more appropriate than others, depending on the nature of your data. So far, you've seen how to load up a hash table with data that very conveniently didn't cause any problems. Needless to say, that was unrealistic. 
Sometimes, if you apply a hash function to two different keys, it generates the same index number for both. But both items can't go in the same place. This is known as a collision. Let's load up the array again, but this time with a different set of data. Mia goes in at position 4. Tim goes in at position 1, just as before. B goes in at position 0. When we do the calculation for Zoe, she goes in at position 5. But then along comes Sue. And when we calculate an index for Sue, we get position 4. But this is already occupied. So we look at the next place along. But this too is occupied. But the next place along isn't. So that is where we're going to place Sue. The calculated position for Len is 1. But this too is occupied. So Len has to go into the next available space. Mo wants position 3. No problem here. Lou wants to go into position 7. Again, no problem here. But Ray wants position 5, and position 5 is occupied. So is position 6 and 7. So Ray has to go in at position 8. Max wants position 8, but of course this is occupied. So Max goes in at position 9. And finally, Todd wants position 9, but he's going to have to settle for position 10. Resolving a collision by placing an item somewhere other than its calculated address is called open addressing, because every location is open to any item. Open addressing can use a variety of techniques to decide where to place an item that doesn't go where it should. This particular open addressing technique is called linear probing. If the calculated address is occupied, then a linear search is used to find the next available slot. If linear probing gets to the end of the array and it still can't find a free space, it might cycle around to the beginning of the array and continue searching from there. To look up an item in this hash table, the hashing function is applied again. But if there have been collisions and some items are not in their calculated positions, then finding an item will also involve linear probing, that is, a linear search. The more items there are in a hash table, the more likely you are to get collisions when you insert even more data. One way to deal with this is to make the hash table bigger than needed for the total amount of data you're expecting. Perhaps such that only 70% of the hash table is ever occupied. The ratio between the number of items stored and the size of the data array is known as the load factor. If the hash table is implemented as a resizable, dynamic data structure, it could be made to increase in size automatically when the load factor reaches a certain threshold. In an ideal world, every item will be stored in the hash table according to its calculated index. In this best-case scenario, the time taken to find any particular item is always the same. But you can imagine a worst-case scenario too. Depending on the nature of the data used to calculate the index values, and depending on the appropriateness of the hash algorithm, some items may require a linear search of the whole table in order to be found. As long as the load factor is reasonably low, open addressing with linear probing should work reasonably well. Another way to deal with collisions is known as chaining, sometimes referred to as closed addressing. Let's load up this array again. Mia goes in at position 4. But what we have here is a pointer to the first node of a linked list. Tim at position 1. Again, a pointer to the first node of a linked list. B at position 0. Zoe at position 5 and Sue at position 4. Sue is now added to the linked list, and Mia is pointing to Sue. Len goes in at position 1, but Len is just another node in a linked list, and Tim is pointing to Len. Mo at position 3, Lou at position 7, Ray at position 5, she's put onto the end of a linked list, Max at position 8, 
Todd at position 9, and finally our hash table is populated. To search this hash table, you can calculate the index as before to locate the correct element, then use a standard linked list traversal to find what you're looking for. With the chaining method of conflict resolution, you can see there are a greater proportion of items in the correct place, so the lookup is quicker than if you had used linear probing. Of course, traversing a linked list also comes at some cost. If the load factor is low, it may actually be more efficient to use open addressing. When resolving collisions, if the calculated address is occupied, Linear probing involves trying the next place along, and if necessary, the next, and then the next, and so on, until an empty slot is eventually found. But this can result in what is known as primary clustering. In other words, keys might bunch together inside the array, while large proportions of it remain unoccupied. There are, however, alternatives to linear probing that can help to avoid clustering. Rather than simply scanning along for the next available slot, conflict resolution may involve looking at, say, every third slot along until a free space is found, the so-called plus three rehash. Quadratic probing will square the number of failed attempts when deciding how far along from the point of the original collision to look next. Each time another failed attempt is made, the distance from the original point of collision grows rapidly. Double hashing applies a second hash function to the key when a collision occurs. The result of the second hash function gives the number of positions along from the point of the original collision to try next. Closed addressing, on the other hand, involves chaining items that have collided in a linked list or some other suitable data structure. If you know all of the keys in advance, then it's theoretically possible to come up with a perfect hash function, one that will produce a unique index for each and every data item. In fact, if you know the data in advance, you could probably come up with a perfect hash function that uses all of the available space in the array. More often than not, you'll need a more flexible hash table. So, when choosing or writing a hash function, there are some objectives to bear in mind. It should minimise collisions, so, less time is spent on collision resolution and ultimately, data retrieval will be quicker. Ideally, it should give you a uniform distribution of hash values and therefore, the data will be spread across the hash table as uniformly as possible. The hash function should be easy to calculate and it should include a suitable method of resolving any collisions that do occur. To summarise then, Hash tables are used to index large amounts of data. The address of each key is calculated using the key itself. Collisions are resolved either with open or closed addressing. Hashing is widely used in database indexing, compilers, caching, password authentication and more. And finally, the insertion, deletion and retrieval of data from a hash table occur in constant time, but only in the best case scenario. If there have been collisions, this isn't necessarily the case.